A lot of you have been asking me how I made the Disco Elysium dialogue system from three years ago. This video will hopefully shine a light on that old dialogue system and clarify how it was made. Before we get started, we need to address the engine differences. The old dialogue system was made in 3.5, while today we have 4.2. While this might not seem significant for a feature focused on text, the wonderful devs at the Good Dough Foundation have added a few quality of life features which will make the code much shorter and simpler. This of course means that we're not recreating my demo from three years ago, but rather making a modern version of it. Now with that out of the way, let's have a look at the feature people are probably most interested in, the sliding column. It takes about 10 lines of code in GDScript to recreate Disco Elysium. All you need is a single rich text label. In the ready call, add a few new lines. This will make sure that your text appears from the bottom instead of the top. Following that, we need to account for the scrolling of the text. We can do this using a scroll container, but there is an even better way of doing this. The rich text node has its own scroll component, which you can grab using the built-in methods. This will give you access to the current scroll value and the max scroll value. Current scroll value is the location of the scroll in this moment and the max scroll value is the possible maximum naturally the more text you add the larger the maximum value becomes but the current value will stay the same all our code needs to do is tween the current value to the max value which can be done like this Next, we need to add player choice, which can be done in two different ways, using a single rich text label or buttons. The button option is probably what most people will go for because it's built in for handling player input. While the rich text label is just text, how would that even work? Well, the reality is that the rich text label is actually easier than the buttons and is closer to the original method used in Disco Elysium. The rich text node has a powerful feature called meta click. This allows you to program any behavior you want from a URL clicked. And in the rich text label, you can define a URL just by wrapping it in the tag. They should really rename it to URL click to make it a bit more obvious, but that's for another day. Effectively, all we need to do now is add a few lines of text, paste them a little bit from each other and wrap them in the tag. Once completed, just connect the meta click signal and implement your desired behavior. The key element here to remember is that the text you wrap gets passed to the listener function. So make sure that the information you're wrapping is what you need to keep the dialogue and conversation going. Personally, I just make this into a JSON dictionary because it's easier to read what I'm doing, but you can come up with your own system here. Up to now, we've only talked about the UI or the player facing elements of the dialogue system. And that's because I think this is all you need to get started. How you manage the dialogue in your game is up to you. You can do it in a multitude of ways. Personally, I recommend Dialogic and Dialogue Manager, which are very well maintained add-ons for Godot. Links will be in the description, of course. However, if you really do want to make your own Dialogue Manager, this is how you could probably get started. Make a dialogue file in the format of your choice. I will be using JSON because it's fairly flexible and broadly used. Now, all you need to do is decide on a hierarchy of the dialogue. I start from people, followed by dialogue sequence, and then each sequence will have a conversation text and choices. Here is an example from a game I'm currently working on. Any choice, which is continue, again, similar to Disco Elysium, will iterate on the current sequence, while new choices will branch the conversation to a new sequence. All you need to handle this type of dialogue system is reading your dialogue file at the start of the game and parse the JSON. Hope this video helped all of the lost souls from three years ago. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below. I also have a private Discord where you can ask me developer questions if that's something you're interested in. 